Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about complex numbers. So in this section, we're going to study equations where you have solutions that involve the square root of a negative number. So we know that if you square a positive number, it's always positive. If you square a negative number, it will also be positive. So the square of a real number will never be a negative number. So we need to discuss the invention of the complex number system and imaginary numbers. So in this video, we're going to talk about adding and subtracting complex numbers, multiplying complex numbers, dividing complex numbers, and talk about the complex conjugate of a number, and then also perform operations that involve the square root of negative numbers. So although finding the square root of a negative number is impossible, if you create the complex number system and talk about imaginary numbers, then it is possible to simplify square roots of negative numbers and you can actually do operations on them. So let's begin by talking about the imaginary unit i. So since the square of a real number is never negative, this equation, x squared equals negative 1, will have a solution that involves imaginary numbers. So we need to talk about what's called an extended number system. So it's larger than the set of real numbers, and it's called the set of complex numbers. So the imaginary number i, it's lowercase i, defines the solution to this equation, x squared equals negative 1. So the imaginary unit is denoted with a lowercase i, and it is denoted as the complex number, or the imaginary number, square root of negative 1. And so when you square both sides of this equation, i squared equals square root of negative 1 squared, you get i squared equals negative 1, because the square root and the square root will cancel each other out. So i is the square root of negative 1, and that's the same thing as saying i squared equals negative 1. So if you use the imaginary unit i, you can express any square root of a negative number involving this number i, the imaginary unit. So here's how you can do that. So if a is a positive number, that means the square root of negative a will be a square root of a negative number. And so you can use the imaginary unit or complex numbers to rewrite this. So the square root of negative a, you can rewrite this as inside the square root is negative 1 times a. That way you separate the negative from the a, because a is positive. Then you can use a property involving radicals. If you have a product on the inside, like negative 1 times a, you can rewrite this as square root of negative 1, and then the square root of a separate, and then we know that square root of negative 1 is what we're calling i, the imaginary unit. So this has become square root of a times i. So it involves complex numbers or imaginary numbers. So it's not a real number, but using complex numbers or imaginary numbers, we can rewrite this. And then to justify our rule, if you square i times the square root of a, you should get negative a. So if you square i and square root of a, and you square it, you take i squared and you take the square root of a and you square it. i squared, we said, was negative 1. So negative 1 times a, and you get negative a. So that means it is correct. That means if you take i square root of a and you square it, you get what's inside the square root. All right, so example one. We're going to simplify expressions that involves the imaginary unit i. So simplify the following expressions in terms of i. So number one, let's simplify the square root of negative 16. So this is not a real number because it's a negative number inside the square root. But let's use this idea of separating the negative from the positive number 16. So you can rewrite this as square root of negative 1 times 16. And now use the property of radicals to rewrite this as square root of negative 1 times square root of 16. Square root of negative 1 is i, and square root of 16 is 4. And so this is 4 times i. So it's not a real number, it's an imaginary number, 4 times i. So number 2, square root of negative 23. Same idea, separate the negative from 23, so negative 1 times 23. You have the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 23, and so this becomes i times the square root of 23. So here's how you usually write your answer involving the imaginary unit i. If it's a whole number or an integer value, you put the i at the end. If your answer involves radicals, the i is typically in the front. It's not at the end. It's not wrong if you put it at the end, but typically the i is in front of the radical. Okay, number three. 
the square root of negative 48. So again, separate the negative 1 from negative 48, and you'll have negative 1 times 48. That is negative 1 inside the square root times square root of 48. And this becomes i times the square root of 48. So notice that the square root of 48 can be simplified because there is a perfect square that goes into 48 evenly. And the largest perfect square that goes into 48 is 16. So you can simplify the square root of 48 even further. It's i, keep it on the outside. 48 can be rewritten as 16 times 3. And so this becomes square root of 16, i times square root of 16, times the square root of 3. And the reason why we do this is because the square root of 16 is 4. So this becomes 4 times i times square root of 3. Okay, let's try a couple more. Number 4. This time we're going to do square root of negative 27. So this is very similar to number 3. So again, separate the negative 1 from 27. So you have negative 1 times 27 on the inside of the square root. That becomes square root of negative 1 times square root of 27. And square, square root of negative 1 is i times square root of 27. And now again, notice that a perfect square goes into 27. And the largest perfect square that goes into 27 is 9. So this becomes i square root of 9 times 3. And so this becomes i square root of 9 times square root of 3. And square root of 9 is a whole number. It's just 3. So 3i. And then you have this square root of 3 left over. Okay, one more. Number 5. This time we're going to involve uh, a fraction. So you have negative 14 plus square root of negative 12, and this is all divided by 2. So again, let's deal with the square root of a negative 12 first. So you have negative 14 plus the square root of negative 1 times 12 on the outside or on the inside of the square root. This is all over 2. So we know how this will work out. This will turn out to be plus square root of negative 1 times square root of 12. And this is all over 2 still. And then square root of negative 1 becomes the imaginary unit i. So negative 14 plus i times square root of 12, all divided by 2. And so now we have to check, can the, sim can the square root of, of 12 be simplified further? Yes, because a perfect square goes into 12 evenly, and it's 4. So rewrite square root 12 as negative 14 plus i square root. The 4 goes into 12 3 times, all over 2. So negative 14 plus i square root of 4 times square root of 3. And this is still all over 2. And then the square root of 4 simplifies to just 2. So negative 14 plus 2i square root of 3, all divided by 2. Now again, notice that this is a fraction. 2 will actually go into negative 14, and 2 goes into 2. So simplify this as factoring out a 2 from the, num from the numerator. So you have a 2, you'll have negative 7 left over from the first term, and then the second term you'll have i and a square root of 3. And this is all over 2. And then the 2's will cancel out now. And so the answer should be negative 7 plus i times the square root of 3. So we'll be doing a lot more problems like number 5 in the next section when we talk about solving quadratic e equations. So you will have solutions that will look like this when you solve quadratic equations. And you might have to use the complex numbers. Alright, so now that we've talked about the imaginary unit i, we actually can talk about now the complex number system. So you have a new system of numbers now. When you add this imaginary unit i, you have complex numbers. So you can have multiples of i. We have like in the last example, we had 4 times i, or we had 5 times i, or we can have a square root times i. So the definition of complex numbers and imaginary numbers, the set of all numbers of this form, a plus b times i, so a is just a number and b is just a number, but the i is the imaginary unit in square root of negative 1. All numbers of this form are called imaginary numbers or complex numbers. A is called the real part because it's just a real number. B is called the imaginary part 
because it's a real number times i. If b is not zero, then you will always have a complex number or imaginary number because if the b is zero, you won't have an i term, a term involving the imaginary unit. You'll just have the, the real number. So if you have a b that's not zero, then you will have an i term, which means you have imaginary numbers. If the a was zero, and you only have a number times i, this is called a pure imaginary number because it's just involving imaginary numbers only. So here's a few examples of complex numbers. Negative four plus six times i. This is in this form a plus bi. The a is negative four and b is six. The negative four is the real part. The six is the imaginary part. Two times i. That's really zero plus two i if you rewrite it into this form. So zero is the real part, that's the a, and two is the imaginary part. Or if you have a real number three, you can rewrite this as three plus zero i. So if you have three is the real part, zero is the imaginary part. So notice that you can actually write a real number involving complex numbers. You'll have zero times i. So a complex number is said to be simplified if it can be expressed in this form, which is called standard form, a plus bi. So any complex number in this form is simplified. If b involves a radical, you usually write the i before the radical, like we've said before. So for example, seven plus three i times the square root of five, you would write it that way rather than putting the i at the end. So notice that if you write it like this, it's not wrong, it's just not very, very conventional to write it this way. Seven plus three square root of five i, it's very confusing whether this i is intended to be underneath the radical or not. So that's why you put the i in front of the radical. All right, so let's talk about how large the complex number system really is and how it relates to other systems of numbers that we are familiar with. So the real numbers are here. You can have whole numbers, negative whole numbers, the integers. You can have fractions, you can have decimals. Those are the real numbers. If you have just the imaginary units and multiples of the imaginary units, then you have the complex imaginary numbers. If you combine those two, you get the complex numbers. So in other words, the real number system are a subset of the set of complex numbers. What that means is that you can write every single real number as an imaginary number or complex number in this standard form. So what that means is that every real number can be written as a complex number. So if you take a if you take a real number a, you can always write it as a complex number as a plus zero times i. So that means the complex number system is actually larger than the real number system because the real numbers is a subset of the complex numbers. Every real number can be a complex number but not the other way around. Not every complex number is a real number. So if you have an answer that involves i's, that's a complex number, but it's not a real number. But every real number can be written as a complex number. All right, let's talk about when two complex numbers are actually equal to one another. So if you have two complex numbers and they're written in standard form, you can determine if two complex numbers are equal if both their real parts and their imaginary parts are the same. So this complex number a plus bi is equal to this complex number c plus di, so a, b, c, and d are just real numbers. These two complex numbers are equal if a is equal to c and b is equal to d. So in other words, the real parts have to be equal and the imaginary parts have to be equal to one another for these two complex numbers to be equal to one another. All right, so now that we know what complex numbers are and what they actually look like in standard form, 
Let's talk about how do you actually do operations with complex numbers. So add, subtract, multiply, and divide. So if you want to add, subtract, and multiply complex numbers, you can use the same methods as we use for binomials. And keep in mind that the i squared can be simplified if it comes up, and it can be simplified to negative 1. So if you want to add and subtract complex numbers, if you add and subtract complex numbers, remember that you can simply add the real parts, and you can add the imaginary parts together separately. And then you express their answer in standard form. So you have a plus bi is one complex number. You add another complex number. You add the real parts. So you add a plus c together, and that will be a real number. You add the bi and you add the di together, and that's really b plus di. So treat it like it's just like a, an x term. If you have two i's and three i's, you really have two plus three or five i's. Subtraction works exactly the same way, just be careful with your negative sign. So a plus bi subtract c plus di. It's really a minus c is the real part, and b minus d is the imaginary part times i. So example two, adding and subtracting complex numbers, perform the indicated operations to simplify the complex number and make sure your answer is in standard form. So number one, seven plus two i is one complex number. Add it to the complex number four minus, or one minus four i. So to do this, add the real parts together, seven plus one, do not involve i, so add those together. Plus, you add the imaginary numbers together now. 2i minus 4i, so 2 plus negative 4, and that's the i term. So this becomes 8 minus 2i. Okay, number 2. Negative 2 plus 6i plus 4 subtract i. So again, add the real parts, negative 2 plus 4, add the imaginary parts, 6, and there's a negative 1 in front of the i on the second complex number, so 6 plus negative 1, and that's the i term, so you have negative 2 plus 4 is 2, 6 minus 1 is 5, so 2 plus 5i. And notice that these answers are in standard form, so be very, it's very important to make sure your answer is in standard form. Number 3, let's do some subtraction now. So 3 plus 4i subtract 7 subtract 6i. So like I said before, be very careful with your negative signs because you're subtracting a binomial. So you have 3 subtract 7 for the real part plus 4 subtract negative 6. And that's the imaginary part. So 3 subtract 7 is negative 4. 4 subtract negative 6 is really 4 plus 6, or 10. So negative 4 plus 10i. Number 4. Negative 7 plus 5i subtract 5 subtract 7i. So again, try to do this one the same way. Negative 7 subtract 5 is the real part, plus 5 subtract negative 7. And that's the imaginary part. So negative 12. And then negative 5 minus negative 7 is really 5 plus 7. So that's negative 12 plus 12i. 12 okay, number 5. Negative 3 plus 2i subtract negative 9 subtract 11i. So this one works the same way. You have the real part is negative 3 minus negative 9. So negative 3 minus negative 9. Plus the imaginary part would be 2 subtract negative 11. Times i. So now just be very careful with the signs. Negative 3 plus 9 is 6. 2 minus negative 11 is really 2 plus 11. So 6 plus 13i. Okay, number six, negative four plus five i minus negative two plus five i. So negative four minus negative two is the real part, 
plus 5 subtract 5 is the imaginary part times i. So negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2 plus 0i. So that's the complex number, but notice that you have 0 times i. So this really does simplify to just a real number, negative 2. So you take two complex numbers, you subtract them, you get a real number. That's okay. All right, now number 7. This will be a little bit more work because we're going to be given square roots of negative numbers to start off with. So this is a combination of what we learned so far with example 2 and also combining it with example 1. So 5 times the square root of negative 8 plus 3 times the square root of negative 18. So first thing to do is make sure that these square roots of negative numbers are rewritten in terms of i, the imaginary unit. So this becomes 5 times the square root negative 1 times 8, like we were doing in, the, in example 1, plus 3 times the square root of negative 18 becomes negative 1 times 18 inside the square root. And so now we can simplify this involving the imaginary unit. This becomes 5 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 8 plus 3 times the square root of negative 1 times the square root of 18. So now I'll change all the square roots of negative 1s to i's. This becomes 5i square root of 8 plus 3i square root of 18. So now we have two complex numbers, but now let's see if we can simplify the square roots even further. 8, 4 goes into 8 evenly, and 4 is a perfect square. So yes, that one can be simplified. And 18, 9 is a perfect square, and 9 goes into 18 evenly. So you can simplify the square root of 18 as well. This becomes 5i. Square root of 8 will be 2 times 4 plus 3i. Square root of 18 is really 9 times 2. So now rewrite these involving each square root separately. So 5i square root of 2 square root of 4 plus 3i square root of 9 times square root of 2. So 5i times square root of 2 is just square root of 2, but square root of 4 is simplifies to just 2. And then 3i, square root of 9 is 3. And then again, square root of 2 is just stay square root of 2. But now notice you're multiplying all these together. So 5i times 2 is 10i, square root of 2. And then 3i times 3 gives you 9i, square root of 2. And so think of these as like terms or unlike terms. Notice that you have a 10i in front of the square root, and that one has 9i. So you have 10i's, 9i's, that's 19i's, but it's also important to check the radical as well. They have to be the same. So square root of 2, square root of 2. So yes, I have 19i's, square root of 2. So check the, that the radical is the same, they are, and now I can add what's on the front or the coefficient in front of the radical. So if square root twos are the same, 10i plus 9i gives me 19i square root two. So that is now completely simplified. Okay, multiplication. Multiplication of complex numbers is performed exactly the same way as you would perform multiplication involving polynomials or binomials using the distributive property and also the FOIL method. And just keep in mind that if you have an i squared, that needs to be simplified to just negative 1. So that your answer only involves either real numbers or complex numbers with just i, no i squares. So number 3, multiplying complex numbers. Perform the indicated operations to simplify the complex number. And again, make sure your answer is in standard form. So number 1, negative 3i times 7i subtract 5. So in this problem we will use the distributive property because you have one complex number on the outside of the parentheses and one complex number on the inside of the parentheses. So negative 3i times 7i minus 5 distribute. So take 3i times each of the terms. Negative 3i times 7i gives you negative 21i and there's an i squared that, that, that comes about. And then you have negative 3i times negative 5 
that is positive 15i. Now this can be simplified because the answer needs to be in standard form. That means a real part and an imaginary part times i. There are no i squares in standard form. So i squared needs to be replaced with a negative 1 because that's what it's equal to. So negative 21 times negative 1 is the i squared plus 15i. Negative 21 times negative 1 is 21 positive plus 15i. And so that is now in standard form. Real part, imaginary part, times i. Okay, number 2. 8i on the outside times 2i minus 7. So again, use the distributive property to take 8i times each of the terms. So 8i times 2, 8i times negative 7. So 8i times 2i is 16i squared. 8i times negative 7 is negative 56i. And then i squared becomes negative 1 again. So 16 times negative 1 minus 56i. 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. So negative 16 minus 56i. And now it's in standard form. Number 3. This time we'll have two different binomials. So negative 5 plus 4i times 3 plus i. So notice you have two terms involving this complex number and two terms involving this complex number. It looks like a binomial. Two terms, two terms. You have to use the FOIL method to multiply this out. So negative 5 plus 4i 3 plus i. So negative 5 times 3 gives you negative 15. Negative 5 times i gives you negative 5i. 4i times 3 gives you 12i. And 4i times i is 4i squared. So plus 4i squared. So now treat the i terms like they're like terms. Negative 5i plus 12i is positive 7i. So negative 15 plus 7i, and we have an i squared that comes up again. That's replaced with a negative 1. So 4 times negative 1. Negative 15 plus 7i minus 4. And then you have negative 15 and negative 4 are like terms. That's negative 19 plus 7i. And so now the answer is in standard form. All right, this time we're going to do number 4 would be negative 4 minus 8i times 3 plus i. So again, we have two terms times two terms. We'll need to use the FOIL method to multiply these two complex numbers together. So we have four multiplications to do. Negative 4 times 3, that's negative 12, so a real number. Negative 4 times i, that's negative 4i, so an imaginary number. Negative 8i times 3 is negative 24i, so another imaginary number. And then negative 8 times i gives you negative 8i squared. So you might think negative 8i squared is an imaginary number, but we've seen three times before the i squared needs to be replaced with a negative 1 still. So negative 12, negative 4i minus 24i is negative 28i, and then again i squared replaced with negative 1. So negative 12 minus 28i, and then negative 8 times negative 1 gives you plus 8. So that's really a real number. And so now combine like terms. Negative 12 plus 8 is negative 4 minus 28i. And now it's in standard form. Okay, number 5. This time, 7 minus 5i times negative 2 subtract 3i. So you have two terms times two terms. We'll have to use FOIL again. 7 minus 5i negative 2 minus 3i, four multiplications. 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. 7 times negative 3i is negative 21i. Negative 5i times negative 2 gives you positive 10i. And then negative 5i times negative 3i gives you positive 15i squared. So now this simplifies just like the last few problems. Combine the i terms, negative 14, and then negative 21 plus 10 gives you negative 11i. And replace the i squared with a negative 1. So plus 15 times negative 1. Negative 14 minus 11i minus 15. So negative 29 minus 11i. Okay, number 6.
one more like these problems. So you have 8 minus 4i times negative 3 plus 9i. 4. 8 times 9i is 72i. Negative 4i times negative 3 gives you positive 12i. And negative 4i times negative 9, or positive 9i, is negative 36i squared. So now, you've seen this story before. 72i and 12i, that can be combined to give you 84i. And then i squared is replaced with a negative 1. So negative 36 times negative 1, negative 24, plus 84i. And this becomes plus 36. And then combine like terms, negative 24 plus 36 gives you 12. And then the i term is 84i. So 12 plus 84i is in standard form. Okay, number 7. This time we're going to talk about a problem that's going to get us ready for a division of complex numbers. So you have 3 minus 5i and 3 plus 5i. So you have two complex numbers multiplied together. The only difference is one of them has a minus between the 3 and the 5i and one has a plus. But you would do this exactly the same way as the last several problems. Use the FOIL method because you have four terms when you have the two complex numbers written in standard form together. So 3 times 3 gives you 9. 3 times 5i is 15i. Negative 5i times 3 is negative 15i. And then negative 5i times positive 5i is negative 25i squared. So what's different about this problem that you notice compared to the others? This time the i terms will cancel each other out. You have 9 plus 0 i's, so in other words no i term at all. And then the i squared still needs to be replaced with a negative 1. So 9, the i term can just be dropped because there are no imaginary parts to this complex number. And negative 25 times negative 1 is 25, which is 34. So you've taken two complex numbers, multiply them together, and you get a real number only. And this is in standard form. It's 34 plus 0i. Okay, number 8. Let's try a similar problem. This time it's negative 5 plus i times negative 5 minus i. So again, just change the sign between the real part and the imaginary part. So we'll have to use FOIL again. Negative 5 times negative 5 is 25. Negative 5 times negative i is positive 5i. i times negative 5 gives you negative 5i. So again, the i terms will cancel each other out again. And then i times negative i is negative i squared. So 25 plus 0i. i squared is replaced with a negative 1. So negative, negative 1. So the opposite of negative 1. So this becomes 25 plus 1, or 26. So it looks like there's this special property that if you take a number, a complex number, you change the sign between the real part and the imaginary part, the answer will just be a real number. So this is going to be very important when we talk about division. Okay, a couple more. Number 9. This time we have a complex number that's being squared, like this. 2 plus 3i, all in parentheses, squared. This does not mean 2 squared and then 3i squared, or 9i squared. Okay, keep in mind, it works just like binomials. The square means you have two of them multiplied together, so it's 2 plus 3i, 2 plus 3i. So you have to use FOIL method. Okay, you can't just square each of them. You take 2 times 2, that gives you 4. 2 times 3i is 6i. 3i times 2 is another 6i, and 3i times 3i gives you 9i squared. So if you did 2 squared, that would give you the 4. If you did 3i squared, that would give you the 9i squared, but you would forget these two middle terms. So make sure you write it out twice and then use the FOIL method. So this is just like the last several problems. Combine the like terms. 4 plus 12i. i squared is negative 1 again, so 9 times negative 1. You have 4 plus 12i minus 9. And now 4 minus 9 is negative 5 plus 12i. And now it's, in, it's a complex number, and so we have to write it in standard form. 
All right, one more multiplication problem. Let's try 5 subtract 2i all to the second. So again, just like number 9, write this out twice so that we know that we have to do multiplication four times. 5 times 5, 25. 5 times negative 2i is negative 10i. Negative 2i times 5 is another negative 10i. And negative 2i times negative 2i is positive 4i squared. So again, the i terms will combine to give you negative 20i. So 25 minus 20i plus 4 times i squared, again, is negative 1. And now 25 minus 20i minus 4. And that will give us 21 minus 20i when the complex number is written in standard form. So notice that these last two problems, if you're squaring a complex number, the middle terms won't cancel out like we had with these number 7 and number 8 problems. If you have a complex number that's being squared, the middle terms need to be combined, and so the answer will be a complex number. Alright, the last thing that we're going to talk about in this video is how do you divide complex numbers? Because we've done addition, subtraction, and multiplication. There's only one more arithmetic or arithmetic operation left and it's division. And we need to talk about complex conjugates first. So complex conjugates, how does it relate with division? You can multiply two complex numbers or two imaginary numbers and get a real number. We saw this in the last example. So this happens when you multiply numbers like this, a plus bi, and you just change the sign to plus to a minus between the two terms, the a real part and the imaginary part. So if you take a plus bi, and you multiply with a minus bi, you'll have a squared. a times negative bi is minus abi. bi times a is positive abi. And bi times negative bi is negative b squared, because you have b times b. And i times i gives you i squared. Well, the middle terms will cancel each other out. You have minus abi and a positive abi. So that's exactly what happened when we talked about these kind of problems before. And so the answer will be, after you replace the i squared with a negative 1, a squared plus b squared. That is just a real number. You don't have i's involved. So we've taken two complex numbers, we multiply them together, and you get a real number, a squared plus b squared. So these kind of multiplication problems are very important because if you take two complex numbers, you get a real number. The a plus b i is a complex number. The a minus bi, where you change the plus to a minus, or vice versa, this has a special name. It's called the complex conjugate. So if you start off with a plus bi, and you change the sign from plus to a minus between the real and the imaginary parts, a minus bi is called the complex conjugate to a plus bi. And why is this important? Because if you take two complex conjugates and you multiply them together, it will give you a real number. So complex conjugates are used to divide complex numbers. The goal of any division problem with complex numbers is that you want the denominator to be a real number. The real number occurs when you take the complex conjugate of the denominator and multiply it with the denominator, the original denominator. Because when we take two complex conjugates and multiply them together, you get a real number. All right, example four. Use complex conjugates to divide complex numbers. So again, the same instructions. Perform the indicated operations to simplify the complex number. And again, make sure your answer for complex numbers is always in standard form. So number one, we're going to take 2 and divide by 3 subtract i. So how do you do a real number and divide by a complex number? Well, you keep the number as it is. You keep the numerator and denominator the same. But now you need to multiply the denominator by its complex conjugate, which would be 3 plus i. Now, if you do the same, if you multiply this in the denominator and you want this complex number to be equal, you need to do the same thing in the numerator. So multiply the numerator by the complex conjugate of the denominator, 3 plus i. And so now you can combine by multiplying the numerators together. So 2 times 3 plus i and combine the denominators together by multiplying them together. So 3 minus i times 3 plus i.
So now these are kind of the problems that we were doing in example three. You have distributed property in the numerator, two times three, six, two times i is two i. Denominator, notice you have two terms times two terms and it's complex conjugates multiplied together. We know that the middle terms will cancel each other out. So you'll have three times three, nine, three times i is three i, negative i times three is minus three i, and minus i times positive i is negative i squared. So the numerator is six plus two i. The denominator, notice that you will not have an i term because they cancel each other out. You'll have nine plus zero i, subtract, and i squared is replaced with negative one, so 6 plus 2i divided by 9 plus 1. So the denominator turns out to be a real number, not a complex number. So this is very important. So you have 6 plus 2i in the numerator, and the denominator is 10. So we've taken a real number divided by a complex number, and we get a complex number. It's just we have to simplify this now. So you have 6 divided by 10 is the real part of the complex number, and the imaginary part is two divided by 10, and then keep the i. So notice that this looks like standard form. It's a number plus a number times i, and six tenths reduces to three fifths, and two tenths reduces to one fifth. So three fifths plus one fifth i, and that's a complex number in standard form. Okay, number two, five i, divided by four subtract three i. So again, this time we have a complex number in the denominator. We're gonna use its complex conjugate to multiply the numerator and denominator by four, my, or four plus three i. So multiply the numerator by four plus three i. Multiply the denominator by four plus three i. So you'll have five i times four plus three i in the numerator, and four minus three i times four plus three i in the denominator. So distribute again in the numerator. Five i times four is 20 i. Five i times three i is positive 15 i squared, divided by, now the denominator, you have two terms times two terms. We know the middle terms will cancel out when we multiply by conjugates together. You have 16 plus 12i minus 12i minus 9i squared. And so notice that the middle terms cancel out involving the i terms. So 20i plus 15 times i squared, that's negative 1, divided by 16 plus 0i minus 9i squared is again negative 1. So 20i minus 15 divided by 16, and then negative 9 times negative 1 is plus 9. So 20i minus 15 in the numerator. The denominator becomes 25. So it's just a real number again. So this is why division using the complex conjugate of the, denom the denominator works. You want a real number in the denominator, so that way you can separate the real part and the imaginary part and simplify the fractions. So your answer is in standard form for the complex number. So notice that the real part is negative 15 divided by 25. The imaginary part is 20 divided by 25 i. And so this will simplify the fractions to be um, negative three-fifths plus four-fifths i. So again, this is a complex number and it's in standard form. Okay, a couple more. Number three. This time we're going to take two plus five i and divide by two plus i. So again, same idea. We're dividing by a complex number, so we need to multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator. So 2 plus 5i stays the same. Denominator, 2 plus i. But then multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 minus i and 2 minus i. So now we have foil in the numerator and foil in the denominator. 
So 2 plus 5i times 2 minus i. Denominator is 2 plus i times 2 minus i. So the numerator, after you FOIL, you'll have 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times negative i is negative 2i. 5i times 2 is 10i. And 5i times negative i gives you negative 5i squared divided by denominator. We know it's going to be a, a real number, but we're going to have 4 minus 2i plus 2i. They'll cancel each other out. And you'll have i times negative i is minus i squared. So now, the numerator, the numerator will not be a real number. It could turn out to be a complex number, like this. You have 4 plus 8i minus 5 times negative 1 divided by, the denominator will be 4 plus 0i minus negative 1. So this simplifies to 4 plus 8i plus 5 divided by 4 plus 1. And so 9 plus 8i and the denominator again is a real number and it's just 5. So now rewrite this so that it's in standard form. You have 9 fifths is the real part and the imaginary part is 8 fifths times i. Alright, one more. So number 4, we're going to take 5 subtract 2i and divide by 4i. So this time is the first time we've had a division by just a 4i and not just two terms. That only has one term. So we're going to do this the same way though. 5 minus 2i divided by 4i multiply by the complex conjugate. Well, the complex conjugate of 4i is change the sign in front of the i term. Well, that becomes negative 4i and negative 4i. So it's really 0 plus 4i. The complex conjugate would be 0 minus 4i. So multiply by negative 4i in the numerator and denominator. So 5 minus 2i times negative 4i divided by 4i times negative 4i in the denominator. So this time we have to FOIL or uh, distribute in the numerator. So negative 4i times 5 is negative 20i. Negative 2i times negative 4i is positive 8i squared. Denominator is negative 16i squared. And so now change the i squares to negative 1 to negative 20i plus 8 times negative 1 divided by negative 16 times negative 1. And so now notice that the denominator is just a real number again. Negative 20i minus 8 all divided by 16. And so now let's rewrite this to be in standard form. Negative 8 divided by 16 is the real part, because it does not involve i. The imaginary part is minus 20 divided by 16, and then keep the i. And then these fractions can be simplified. Negative 1 half, and 20 over 16 will reduce to negative 5 fourths i. And so now this answer is in standard form, negative one-half minus five-fourths times i. So if you divide complex numbers, always make sure that you multiply by the conjugate, the complex conjugate of the denominator in both the numerator and denominator. This will ensure that the denominator will always turn out to be a real number. We had 10, then we had only 25 for the second problem, we had 5, and then we only had 16. So when you multiply by complex conjugates, you will always get a real number, and that's what we want. We want to be able to get the real number in the denominator so we can take the numerator and rewrite it into standard form. So this finishes up our video on complex numbers and also operations on complex numbers, addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving quadratic equations using factoring.